For the Jews of Spain, the expulsion came as a great surprise. I would like to emphasize that we are talking about a very large community here, in numeric terms, in terms of the number of Jews, with the historic as long as that of Rome. Since the days of Rome, there was a Jewish presence in Spain. Truly, the Jews from Spain came out of the desert, to the Gentile desert. It has to be said, one, one sole country, and I think that in all of history, it is the only country, the Ottoman Empire, for its own interests, but that does not matter, that accepted all the Jews unconditionally. No matter if you were poor or rich, it did not matter. Without limit. It was really the decision of Sultan Bayezid II that saved many Jews. If the Catholic kings wanted to deal a mortal blow to the Jews in Spain, they did not succeed. Because what happened afterwards, in the wake of the expulsion, was a Judaism that was strong, faithful, creative, active. Just to give you an example, Chaim Ben Veniste, who wrote Knesset Agdola, and the great Rabbi Chaim Palachi, and so many of the truly great, who were at a global level in terms of their halachic writings throughout the world. Not everyone, not everyone who studies Knesset Agdola knows that Chaim Ben Veniste is from Izmir. We could have expected that these exiles who settled in Morocco, in Italy, in parts of Italy, in the Ottoman Empire, should have been traumatized, should have been depressed, in despair, lacking confidence. Their hearts should have been filled with bitterness and complaints. We could have expected this despair to lead to a very tough situation. And what happened? Revival. As if from zero, from nothing. This is the great miracle that instead of despair, in the wake of the expulsion, came revival. There has never been such a fruitful period in the history of the Jewish people, in cultural terms, in religious terms, in terms of renewal and innovation. You have surely heard of Safed in the 16th century, the attempts to renew its growth, of Kabbalah and Safed, of the Shulchan Aruch, written by one of the exiles from Spain, Rabbi Joseph Caro, of the Kabbalah Shabbat, that today is an essential element in the synagogue, that people think was given to Moses in Sinai, which was established here. The Ottoman Empire took them in, and the Jews brought with them banking, the textile industry, medicine, many things, printing presses in Saloniki, in Istanbul, in Edirne, and later on in Izmir. Do you know how much time would pass until the first Turkish printing press would be established? 250 years. And so this was a Judaism that was not persecuted, not depressed, and not in despair that immediately took over many of the communities where Greek-speaking Romagno Jews from the time of Byzantium lived and immediately settled there, establishing congregations with a different kind of organization there for the first time. There are 40 different congregations in Saloniki, the Aragon congregation, the Portugal congregation, the Catalan congregation, Every group of Jews that was large enough from a particular area or a particular town in Spain and in Portugal established a congregation there. Same happened in Istanbul, in Edirne, which is where Rabbi Joseph Karo stayed until he went to Israel. There were 13 congregations. The divisions and multitude of organization naturally shows how the Jews were. But, nonetheless, this also provides evidence of vitality. 
evidence of a lively existence and a desire to preserve the past. And in many places in the Jewish world in general, synagogues were destroyed. I have also visited many places, not only in Turkey, I have visited a large part of the world. Synagogues have disappeared, been destroyed. The majority of the synagogues are in ruins. Some have become mosques in Turkey. Some are complete ruins. I went to certain places and nothing. I, I saw Hebrew letters that had fallen from the wall. It is the good fortune of the Izmir community, which was in fact one of the important communities, mainly of the 17th century, the beginning of the 17th century and on, when it became an important port city. There was really a tremendous community there, in terms of creativity, dozens and hundreds of books that were written, and the few synagogues that you've seen, and truly I congratulate them for having done this, in fact, they, they show how they were preserved by fewer than a thousand Jews that were remaining in Izmir. And they're preserving these places. Naturally, they need renovation and so on. And in fact, this is almost the last moment to take action so that what is there will remain.